I just need to fill the top of the funnel. That's the first one. And the reality is, while, yes, you do need to have a, a good funnel always, the reality is the quality really impacts those conversion conversion rates. So one of the things that, that Acton did was we work with serious decisions. And from Sirius's perspective, and this is borne out for Acton as well, because we, we use our own platform for our demand gen activities, along with um, uh, Vanine is just a super, super power user uh, as well as the platform. But, you know, what they looked at here was, um, you know, early, better qualification is, is key. And it's the idea is, you know, you look at this uh, lead level two. Um, if we take a look at that, a lead level two basically is passing a lead over to a salesperson. And it maybe way too early in the cycle. And what you're seeing is if it comes over too soon without being qualified, the conversion to one ratio is only about 2.8%. That's, that's not a really good conversion at, at all from open to closed business. But what they talk about is lead level four, or you can look at, look at it um, from a lead scoring perspective. If they get a higher lead score, um, that's going to be where the, the better um, conversion is going to happen. Um, I, I really liken it to, you know, if, if someone d downloads just a white paper or they take a look at an ebook or some kind of content on your website and, it, and it's gated, which um, just to be on the same page with everybody, gated content just basically means they need to give you some pretty basic information. Um, we can talk about what... Um, uh, form fill fatigue looks like, but basically you're just capturing their their name and their email address, for example. Just because they've downloaded one single piece of information from you does not mean that they are ready to get a call from a sales rep or you know be put into this bottom of funnel funnel change. I mean, it, it's it's like if you go out on the first date and uh, the person that you're with is, is thinking, hey, we're going to get married, and you're just trying to figure out, are we going to really continue, continue to date? But um, passing the lead over after it's been nurtured uh, from that top of funnel to middle of funnel, that's where we really need to get you to focus on. So just filling the top of the funnel is not going to work. And let's, as we look at this, let's, let's talk about disruption um, overall and, and how that actually is driving things. So, you know, Disruption, it, it has happened in, in businesses forever, and it's nothing new. And if you think about it, it really tends to come in waves. So go way back before any of us were born, um, the introduction of the assembly line and, and mass production, that disrupted manufacturing in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And that led to the Industrial Revolution. And let me ask you, who do you think of as disruptive companies in the um, automobile industry today? Um, Tesla comes to mind. Um, Uber in the way that they, they do things. Maybe even Apple. You know, in the, in the 1900s, it was, it was Henry Ford. Um, Henry, he did not invent the automobile, but what he did do was perfect the assembly line in a way that he could produce a Model T Ford in 93 minutes. It, at the time, that was absolutely revolutionary. You know, companies that start out as disruptors potentially can become uh, the disrupted in the future. So part of our message today is that, you know, disruption is not something new. You know, every business is always at risk from, from distribution. You know, in today's world, it's digital. You know, in the 1900s, it was mass production. You know, just a handful of years ago, it was social. So you always need to be thinking about, you know, some potentially disruptive trends and how they're transforming your business in response. You know, the current wave of disruption is being driven by the digital economy. You know, new competitors are appearing uh, with business models that, that are unburdened by the physical. I mean, take a look at a few of these right here. Um, Airbnb, you know, largest accommodation provider that, that doesn't have any real estate. You know, what do the, all of these have in common? They're, they're leveraging digital assets 
and not physical assets. So think of that as your niche in the market as well as all those digital assets that you have. You know, by not owning physical assets, they're able to be much more agile and scale faster. Um, the this, digital disruptors, they innovate rapidly, and then they use their innovations to gain market share and scale a lot faster than the incumbents that, that are still clinging to predominantly physical business models. You know, think about this. The first text message ever was sent in December of 1992. And 23 years later, 2015, Text had grown to 23 billion messages a day. That's billion with a B, not million, 23 billion. Pretty substantial. Think about this. WhatsApp started in 2011, and in four years, they grew to over 30 billion messages per day. So text messaging, 20 years to 23 billion per day. WhatsApp, four years to 30 billion per day. Um, the impact of the Industrial Revolution was broad. But the pace and scope of business disruption was nowhere near what we're seeing today with the move to digital. You know, the, the Industrial Revolution, roughly 50 years. Uh, digital disruption is taking place uh, in less than a dec decade, and it's disrupting most companies. You know, transportation, real estate, text messaging, media and entertainment, retail. No industry is really completely Im immune. And um, a recent study by the Global Center for Digital Business Transformation took a look at the industries that were most likely to be disrupted by the, the digital revolution. So 41, this, it basically the chart shows the respondents who felt that they were, were more likely to go out of business as, as a result of the digital disruption. First thing to note is that a lot of the industries in this study are above the average. You know, hospitality and travel, retail, media and entertainment, financial services, manufacturing. You know, note really here, there's there's very few industries that don't feel like they're affected. You know, when I looked at it, it kind of what stood out to me was that utilities kind of are the only industries not so worried about digital disruption. Otherwise, for, for most of the industries, um, the risk from digital disruption is very real. You know, further evidence of this and one of the drivers is the pervasiveness of, of smartphones. You know, this chart basically is, is showing this particular buyer journey, um, accessing it from, from phone, accessing it from the desktop. I mean, it used to be back in the day we as companies, we as marketers, held the keys to the kingdom. Um, you know, if somebody wanted information, they had to come to us. Well, the internet changed changed all of that, and the information is out there. And your buyers and your existing customers and prospects, they're they're leaving so many digital breadcrumbs behind. As marketers, we've got so much complexity that we have to successfully manage in the business process. The, the life of marketers, it's really gotten difficult due to all these trends. You know, what we've seen is that um, really about 70, maybe even creeping up into 75% of the buying process is done by the time a, a prospect is, is ready to engage with, with sales. So taking a look at it this way, 93% um, of worldwide users say new technology has changed how what their customer ex expectations are. You've got to be able to pick up those digital breadcrumbs that, that are left behind. And, you know, a few questions. You know, do you have multiple marketing processes? You know, what are they? Do you have one for, for inbound marketing versus outbound marketing? Do you have one for acquired lists that you come back from a trade show with? Things like that. Um, you, you've really got to, to have all of that. And then, you know, what changes in the data that you look like or, or investigating indicate a conversion to a specific change in, in the funnel? And, you know, what are some key data points? Uh, last one there is GDPR infractions could cost your, your company real hard money. I mean, that's, that's a digital disruptor. Um, 
bar none. So, you know, we, Serious Decisions came up with a, a, a great visual on this one. It, it's basically the demand waterfall stages and how just filling the top of the funnel is, is not actually the right way. I mean, you're taking a look at target demand and active demand, and when do you hand these off to, depending on, on how you're configured, um, uh, we looked at it with them as saying, well, marketing can go to telephone sales. Maybe that's the sales development rep or business development rep over to sales or over into the right channel. And as we take a look at it, you know, what is the right spot to truly hand off to telesales? I mean, what type of activities do we see? You know, you, you look at the engaged demand and, and the prioritized demand as we as you roll it down. This is where you really do have to have a better model in place to try to figure out at what point do we send this over? I mean, you take a look, for example, on this one. In particular, maybe this was just a shorter. This this particular person was very engaged and very um, giving indications that they are absolutely looking for um, more information and a quick call from uh, an inside person or even an outside ref, depending on how you guys are all set up. But at that point, it's moving it quickly through, but understanding the buyer journey in there. Um, again, right here, maybe this goes directly skips uh, the demand gen waterfall all the way through to, okay, they've, they've had a couple pieces here, the target and active demand gen programs that you're running. And they are indicating to you through those digital breadcrumbs that we had talked about just a second ago, this is something that we need to get directly over to sales because this is a person that is really, really highly engaged. But this is how overall the demand gen myth of just, I just need to get a, a top of funnel. I need to have that so full. Absolutely, that's part of it, but you need to qualify it. Um, I've been in sales for a number of years, and, you know, I I used to get leads passed over to me from my uh, development team at a different company that uh, it came over with kind of the same uh, – vernacular every time such and so is keen to meet and was very happy to take my call and would like to have a, a meeting scheduled immediately and when I went back in and looked at uh, what have they actually done they had just downloaded a white paper they were in no ways ready for me as a salesperson to be calling them and what they needed to be have done was continue to nurture them through this entire entire buyer journey that we have to master as, as marketing folks